it's Franny, and we're still working on this adorable little 1964 Porsche 356 C car. Today's project is going to be mostly an oil change. We have to change the oil in the engine and in the transmission, and then we have a few little minor adjustments we want to make on the car as well. Our first step in the oil change is to get the car warmed up a little bit, so I'm going to start up the car, take it out for a little toodle, and get it nice and warm. Turn on our fuel. That's perfect. It started right up. That is awesome. Before, it would just crank and crank and crank and crank and I couldn't get it started. So I think our carburetor rebuild was spot on. It's really running great. Listen to that, nice and smooth. Boy, that sounds awesome. All right, let me go ahead and back out the car. And when I back the car out into the driveway, it sits at a bit of a slope, and I noticed it was just dripping quite a bit of very heavy oil. That would be transmission oil. That's a very bad thing. So I pulled apart the boot here at the shift shaft, and this is the seal on the end of the shift shaft. And I've just cleaned this completely, and look at that. We still, we've got a new drip right there. So that's transmission fluid coming out of that shift shaft oil seal. So that's not not good. Well, that's really bad because I think that this car has been dripping oil out of the transmission. I took a look in the tunnel, which is underneath here, and you access that from the inside of the car, and I'll have to show you that. You won't believe it. Well, take a look at this. This is inside the tunnel. You see that? There's an ocean of transmission oil down there. Look at that. Gear oil. See that? Going in through the boot, I would imagine, and just sort of depositing itself right there. So that'll have to be a job for another day, I suppose. I'm going to clean this up, of course, but that shaft seal needs to be replaced. With all of that oil that's leaked out of the transmission, I think it's probably a pretty good idea to go ahead and pull the plug on the side and check the level before we go out for a drive whatsoever. So let me go ahead and do that really quick like a bunny. It's right up here, and I'll go ahead and pull that. It's a big 19 millimeter plug. So this is the fill plug on the side of the transmission here. And in theory, the fluid level should be right, pretty much right at this level here. So I should, I'm gonna put in a clean pinky here and let's see how far down our fluid level is. My oh my. Okay, so I buried my pinky and I did get some oil, but barely any at all without actually touching one of the surfaces in there. Yeah, so see, no oil. All right, so that's super bad. So the, the level is probably at least below this rib here. This is about as far as I can get my pinky on down there. So that would kind of make sense. If our shaft seal is right about this level, which is almost at the bottom of this, we might have a little bit left in the transaxle here, but that's about it. So what does that mean for the transmission? Well, it's really, really bad. It can make the, it can completely destroy the transmission. Obviously, the, the gear oil's in there for a reason. I don't see the, the oil that was pouring out of this thing doesn't look bad and burned or anything, and there's no awful smell, so I think it's probably okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more fluid in and fill this guy back up to this level. Now, of course, it's going to start leaking again here, I think, but at least we'll get some fluid in the transmission. Eventually. There it is. There we go. See the little dribble there? That means we're full. All right, and we'll put our plug back in. Wow, so it was a quart low? At yeah. least, maybe more? Yeah, maybe more. Probably more like a quart and a half, huh? Okay. All right, well, take a look at our seal here. It's definitely still leaking. We had this nice and clean, and look at that, huh? So that seal's definitely gonna have to be replaced. I'm really a little worried that possibly the shaft itself has a nick in it or something, because the seal on the end there looks like it's not that old. This transmission's awfully clean, so I'm guessing that it was taken out of the car at some point, and I don't know. I mean, that's definitely something you would do would be to replace that seal. I totally would do that. I'll have to have a little chat with the owner about that. So obviously I'm not going to be swapping out the transmission fluid today. I'm just going to leave it as is. He's 
just gonna have to deal with the drip until uh, we decide what we're gonna do with it. But it's a slow enough leak that I think it'll be fine for a while. Yeah, that's well, disappointing, huh? If there's oil in the tunnel, then what kind of damage is that causing to other things as well? You know, it's really not a problem because uh, what it's gonna do is keep everything from rusting. So that's not all bad, huh? It's not the end of the world, honestly, to have oil in the tunnel. It's just that it smells inside the car. It smells like gear oil and it's just goopy and yucky. And I've cleaned it all out in there quite a bit. All right, well, I'm gonna take the car out anyways and take it out for a little toodle. We need to warm it up to get the engine nice and warm so we can, we can change the oil. All right, there we go. Okay, so some kind of bad news. I took the car down to fill it up with gas because I just wanted to make sure that we had enough gas in the car. It's awfully low. And let me show you what I found. Take a look at this. Now up here, I had to pack these here so I could get home. But up here, this is completely soaked. I mean, just like absolutely soaked. If you look down in here, you'll see that there's, this thing is completely wet in here. So this is the gas sender right here, and it's leaking gas all over the place. Now, I saw these marks, this brown bit around here and down in here, and I thought it had something to do with this being put on here, but evidently what it is is this thing is just leaking. When I was driving home, I just smelled gas really strongly. And so I quickly pulled over and sure enough, there was gas all over here. I had a bunch of rags with me. I packed it and very slowly moved the car home. But I'm gonna have to pull this out and check the condition of the gasket under here. This is, this is pretty darn scary, all this gas everywhere. So. At any rate, okay, well, our projects on the car have increased a little bit, so let's get to this fuel sender and see what's going on. I'm still seeing some gas here, so holy cow. There we go. I'm guessing our gasset is completely shot under this. Let's go ahead and pull it off and see what we got. Yep, pull our wires off first. This one is loose as well. And this one is loose as well. All these screws were very, very loose. Okay, pull this out. Oh, there's the problem. Oh, that's definitely the problem. Holy cow, all right. Well, take a look at the condition of this gasket. Look at that, only about half of it there. We got a whole bunch of it missing. That's not gonna work. Holy cow, what a mess. Well, that explains why we have so much, oh my gosh, gas going everywhere. We're gonna have to replace that gasket, uh, clean up the surface a little bit as well. It's pretty dirty. I got to work making a new gasket. I found an old cork gasket in my spare parts box that I was able to use as a template and a flat piece of neoprene rubber. So I used a pair of scissors and cut it out and then I also used a hole punch to get the holes in exactly the right spot. Back at the car, I went to work cleaning that surface. Boy, it was pretty rusty. And I cleaned it all up very carefully, not getting anything in the tank itself, and then reinstalled the fuel sender. Now it only goes in one way, and that may look like a star pattern of, of holes on the top, but they're actually not exactly symmetric. So you can really only put this thing in one way. Okay, here's our finished product, all nice and dry, all put back together. I also cleaned the gas tank. You may remember from the brakes episode just how schmutzy it was. I didn't realize that was because of gas flowing down. I saw this tar paper sitting on the top and I thought it had something to do with that, but nope, 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 it should be nice and clean. So there we go, it's all nice and clean, all back together and not leaking, yay. 
And you remember yesterday we put in a new gasket on the gas tank for the gas sender here, for this guy here. And this was the gasket I made. This is made out of neoprene and I thought that neoprene would work pretty well for gasoline and it's not really falling apart. But what I did was, uh, since I wasn't super certain, I took a vat of gasoline and I dropped a few of the bits of this into it overnight. Cause I just wanted to see, is it gonna dissolve, get slimy, anything like that. And you know what I found, which was kind of weird, was that it wasn't slimy, and this one isn't either, and it held together pretty well, but if you pulled on it at all, it would just snap and fall apart. And then when I pulled this guy off, do you see how it must have expanded a bit? Take a look at that. I think it just, it just kind of domed out on me there. So I went down to the auto parts store to see if I could get some gasket material. I was really hoping for a nice, big, thick piece of rubber would be awesome. But, of course, no, they didn't have anything, except for cork. Now they did have a bunch of cork and this is fairly thick cork. So that's the gasket that Porsche used on these things. They use cork in a lot of places actually. The problem with cork is it doesn't last forever but it does actually seal pretty well and this is designed specifically for gasoline and air and oil and all sorts of stuff. So at least I've got the right material. So instead of letting the car go out with a bad gasket which was the problem in the first place I'm going to recut a new gasket for it and just go ahead and reinstall it. I won't bother you with that it's the same sort of thing as the video you've seen on the tank already but uh, I just wanted to let you know in full disclosure that it was really more for overnight anyways I just didn't want an open hole there and I didn't have anything to seal it with so this worked really well for overnight it was great I got my new gasket all cut out I'm all set I'm just gonna go ahead and reinstall this in the car all right here we go I noticed that when I pulled the car back out, it won't hold on a hill with a parking brake. So we're gonna just really quick like a bunny, adjust the parking brake. Now it's done here, right here. There's a little 10 millimeter that needs to be loosened up on this and then a 14, that's the actual adjustment here. So let me go ahead and pull this stop off. And now we have to run this in. All right, and I'll go ahead and test that and make sure we got it where we need it. Our first task is going to be, of course, to drain the oil. This car has uh, two actual drain plugs on it, which is kind of interesting. It has the factory one, and then this car has an uh, aftermarket larger sort of sump plate on here, which is kind of nice, and it also has a drain in it, so we'll be draining both of those pretty easy. This one's a 19 millimeter, and this one's a 15 millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is crack them loose a little bit, and then I think we can slide our tray back and catch both of them at the same time. But before I even get into all that, I want to just make sure that everything is clean. So I'm going to use a little, little cleaner here in a rag. I want to make sure that everything underneath here is nice and clean. We don't want to be any chance of getting any gunk back in the engine. All right. Okay. Well, we'll pull this loose a little bit. There we go. Get to the point where it's kind of hand tight. There we go. We'll loosen our other one as well here. Okay, pull our tray back. This will be exciting. There we go. There's that one. There we go. We'll let that drain for a little bit. Next, we're gonna change out our oil filter. It's here inside this canister. It's a kind of a big nut on there, bolt on the top of this thing. It's a 22 millimeter. Loosen that guy up. It's actually under a spring as well. And there's a copper washer underneath it to get it to seal. 
All right, with that loose, our top will pop off. And this is the spring I was talking about. Now there's also a rubber seal that goes on the inside of this. When you get the filter, they give you kind of this crummy seal. So if your rubber seal is in good condition, looks like this one's awesome. Definitely reuse the rubber seal over this crummy one if you can. All right, then we just pull our filter out. It just sort of slides up. It's got two rubber gaskets on both sides. So sometimes you have to kind of work it up a little bit. Let me get it started here. Try not to do that. That makes a big old mess if you do. There we go. Next step is to go into the pantry, and I'm sure you have one of these things in the kitchen somewhere. Just um, be careful to wash it when you get done with it. This is just a turkey baster. It works great for getting fluids out. So we're gonna we're just gonna pull all the remaining oil that's in this little canister out. So there's quite a bit of oil in there. It's about half a quart. So even if you're not going to swap out the filter, I do the filter every other time, it's still worth it. That's quite a bit of oil to get out. You can sort of mop out anything that's in here, look for any debris, that sort of thing. This is our replacement filter. Looks just like the other one, just not quite as black. And there's really nothing you need to do to prep this. There's a rubber seal on the top and the bottom and they seal around this center post here and the thing's completely coated in oil. No need to put any thing on these guys. Because we took so much oil out of the oil canister, I'm going to go ahead and fill it back up with some new oil. So we just need to put in enough oil to get up to this level here where this tube is connected on the side. And I'm going to reuse this copper washer. They tend to go quite a while before they need to be re-annealed. So this works pretty well. Last thing to do is just replace our cap and snug down the bolt. With our filter swapped out, let's go under the car, put our drain plugs back in so that we can get to filling the oil. I'm gonna clean the holes a bit here. I'm gonna clean the inside of this drain plug a little bit, just a little bit of brake cleaner. The inside is now all nice and clean, and we do have a big aluminum washer that needs to go over the top of this. All right, just like that. We'll put this guy back up here. Now the original drain plug is actually conically shaped. There is no washer for it. So you pretty much just turn it in until it stops leaking. Oh, there we go. We'll get this started. We'll seat this up. Now I'm guessing the torque value on this would be somewhere around maybe 19, 20 foot-pounds of torque. I don't have a torque back for it. It's not a very long wrench. So I know I've done enough of these that I know about what that is. But since I don't have an exact torque spec anyways, I just don't want to put too much force on it because this is aluminum and this is a steel bolt. All right, and then for our original here, this guy, we just kind of run it in a bit until it feels like it sort of doesn't want to go any further. I know it sounds kind of funny, but that's the way these conical ones work. There you go. All right, well, we're all done under here. Let's go ahead and put some oil in the car. Putting the oil back in is super simple. We just open up the top here to this oil flasky looking guy. Now we do want to take a look at that gasket that's under there. It looks like it's a cork gasket and it looks like it's in great shape. So that's good. Don't even need a funnel. How cool is that, huh? That's the rest from the one that we used to fill the oil filter canister. If you want less gluggy gluggy, pour it in kind of sideways like this. A little bit easier to manage. We can pull our dipstick down here and get a, see if we've got any oil on it already. All right, well, it looks to me like we are just over the bottom mark there. Kind of see that right there, how's that? So we'll put in another half quarter or so. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So we can see our level there. It's right below the notch. That looks really good. At this point, I'm going to replace the cover on the top of this tank here. And what I want to do is start up the engine, run it a little bit, and then let it sit for uh, just a few minutes or so, and we'll check our oil level again. It'll also give us an opportunity to look underneath the car and see if we've got any drips or leaks anywhere. I let the engine sit a little bit just so the oil can settle. Let's check our oil level again. And our oil level is about halfway down. So we're down about half on our dipstick. Let's go ahead and add a little more oil. 
All right, that looks perfect. Look at that, just below the top mark there. All right. Well, that's it for the oil change on the car. Super sorry we didn't get to the transmission fluid change, but I do have a video for that, so I'll go ahead and post it up above so that you can go ahead and check that out if you need to see it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, put them down below and I'll get right to them. We've got another episode in this series, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and sub hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell next to it to get notified because we got this car's got a few finish up and then we've got our 3.2 Carrera, we've got stuff for the 993, the i8, all sorts of stuff coming up and you won't want to miss any of it. All right, well thank you so so much for watching and as always a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Okay, well until next time, safe travels, bye!